So Horus has been one of my favorite engines since its release here in the TCG, whether you have put it in the tier limit builds, the anime deck builds like the blue eyes ones, you have the rank eight turbo builds. But in today's video, I'm going to actually be showing you guys a stun build of Horus. Now this deck actually has a lot of really cool combos. It's not just one of those floodgate flip over kind of decks where you just sit on Horus monsters. It actually is a lot more complex and is very, very powerful. It's also very fun to play and it's really exciting because the megatons should be reprinting the horus card so it's going to be really fun and accessible for you guys to try as well if you guys wanted to try this out i think it's a really good build so with that let's get right into today's deck profile to show you guys how to play horus stun in today's format let's go so to start things off with the main deck, it is a 40 card main deck, but to start things off, of course, we are starting with the Horus package. So three Imseti, one Happy, one of this guy, I still can't say this name, one Drama Turf, three King Sark, and two Walls. So this is the entire Horus package. We are playing a pretty heavy Horus package in this build because you are kind of reliant on these cards to push for game and do a lot of things for you. So Horus is, is a very powerful engine. The thing is with these cards is one, Ogre is very popular and that's why I decided to play the Field Spell because the Field Spell counts as King Sark and you really don't want to lose to Ogre in this deck. So that's something that's really important. And two, it's really important because you do play a few quote unquote bricks in the deck and Walls kind of fixes that for you because it gets a Horus monster from your deck to your hand a lot of the time you're going to be getting something like Imseti but then on top of that you get to put a card back from your hand to your deck so if you do draw one of your bricks this fixes it which is really really nice for you and it's a field spell that stays on board so that even if your opponent does get rid of King Sark you can still summon all of these guys over here now of course these are pretty big bodies so these are going to help you push for game a lot of the time depending on the game state that sometimes you know this is a slower deck this is kind of a stun deck I want to call it Horus stun it's uh the best thing to call it but it's not necessarily a full stun deck because there's a lot of cool combos you can do with this and push for a lot of damage right so it's not one of those decks that relies solely on the stun because these cards right over here are so so powerful so this is the horus engine now we are playing a kashtira engine and kashtira works so well with horus for so many reasons i'll explain why in a second but we are playing two unicorn two fenrir one rise heart one rate Soth, one birth and one theosis so this is the kashtira engine that we're running and there's a reason for this now of course once you guys see actually let me show you guys the next part and then it'll make sense so we're playing three vanity fiend right and so this is kind of like the stun part of the deck and uh something i want to talk about here as well so with vanity fiend of course starting off with just special summoning a kashtira monster tributing summoning vanity fiends is absolutely insane so that's something you can do of course which is really good and that's why it synergizes so well it also synergizes with the horus cards you get these in the graveyard you summon them to your side of the field you summon vanity fiend and vanity fiend is one of those cards that is uh really difficult for your opponent to out really if they just have imperm that's that's really it or droplet right but people are not really on droplet as much anymore imperm is all more popular if your opponent does have the imperm they have the imperm of course you're going to be backing this up with a lot of other cards but uh vanity fiend is absolutely insane being able to stop your opponent from special summoning these cards over here are really good as well because they act as extenders for you theosis and birth birth is of course is really good in the grind game and they work really well with the horus cards because let's say you special summon a fenrir let's say you have a fenrir in hand right special summon a fenrir you search let's just say a rise heart it doesn't really matter what you search as much or, or a unicorn doesn't really matter right what essentially is really good about this is fenrir kind of replaces itself in your hand so then at least what you can do is you can go like fenrir search like let's say rise heart and then you can pitch the rise heart with like an Imseti to get the king sark and then you have extra cards in your hand right but the other thing that's really nice about this is you can go fenrir search rise heart special rise heart and then just normal summon vanity fiend and then tribute the rise heart and the really cool thing about that is essentially you have a fenrir plus a vanity fiend on board now right so fenrir is kind of like protection for your vanity fiend and that's really good so it synergizes all really really well together and that's why i really like all these packages it just makes a lot of sense when you guys are testing it and playing it there's a lot of times even if you don't get into vanity fiend and that's the thing that i love about this deck because even if you don't get into vanity fiend there are times where i've literally ended boards on like fenrir unicorn plus a rank eight and the rank eight could be like photon lord a rank eight could be something like your hope harbinger so you're ending on a negate plus a cash tier board which is really really crazy now for some supplementary cards that are really good we're playing one terraforming of course because we want to get to our field spell whether it be rate Soth, whether it be the walls of the uh horus card i can't remember the name but whether it be the horus field spell or rate Soth is really good and then we're also playing two rainbow bridge and the crystal beast sapphire pegasus why we're playing these is kind of the same reason as terraforming of course we want to get to the field spell as fast as possible but rainbow bridge is actually really good to open because let's say you do open up something like an imseti plus a rainbow bridge uh what you can do is you can of course pitch these two get to your king sark so let's say you do this you get to king sark over here then you can banish the rainbow bridge add your sapphire to your hand and then you can add like let's 
I mean, you can add the walls, but you can also add Raid Soth. Then you can go like Raid Soth before you even do anything else, right? What you can do is you can activate Raid Soth, search Fenrir, summon Fenrir, summon Rise Heart, and you guys can see how like you're, you're having so much card advantage here. And then you can activate your King Sark. You can even pitch the Pegasus that you searched as well to get another Horus card in the grave. So do you guys see what I mean? Like it all synergizes so well, which is absolutely insane. And that's why I really, really like uh, this package over here, the Rainbow Bridge with the terraforming, of course, getting to your field spells as well. So uh, I know I just showcased like a mini combo over there, but just opening something like Rainbow Bridge plus Msteady is absolutely insane. And you could argue to play three of these. Um, you definitely could, if I'm being honest with you. I just didn't want to go over 40. I'm on 40 on the dot. So that's why you can definitely argue playing uh, three Rainbow Bridge. I'm just on two because once you use it the first time, it's kind of dead afterwards. So that's why we're just playing uh, the two here. And then uh, the walls, the uh, Horus Field spell that I was talking about earlier is really good because if you do open your Sapphire Pegasus, of course, you need this in the deck so that you can, uh, you know, use your Rainbow Bridge. The really cool thing is you can use that card, put a card back, and the card that you're going to put back a lot of time if you do draw the Sapphire Pegasus is a Sapphire Pegasus. So it always makes Rainbow Bridge live, which is really good. Now, of course, we're also playing uh, three Skill Drain. This wouldn't be a stun deck without three Skill Drain. At the end of the day, if you end on Skill Drain, you're kind of just playing Beatdown because your monsters are so big. So being able to play a Beatdown style deck is really, really good. So three Skill Drain, and then one deck can only be one. This, again, could be, uh, if I'm being honest with you, could be a Rainbow Bridge, and you can play three Rainbow Bridge. However, I will say I really like there can only be one because if you actually look into the main deck, all of the Horus cards are different. So you have a Spellcaster, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast, Beast, uh, your Kashira monsters, Fenrir and Unicorn are Psychic, but Rise Heart is a warrior. So in theory, you have a lot of different uh, types that you guys can be playing with, and this is going to hurt your opponent a lot more than it's going to hurt you. That's why I really like the one there can only be one, right? So these are kind of supplementary. And then of course, we're playing a lot of hand traps. Now you could do two things in this deck. You could play either hand traps or board breakers. I think in this format, hand traps are just way too important. And that's why we're playing the hand traps instead. So we're playing three Ash, three Valor, three Imperm, and then the one called by the Grave, just so you don't lose to a hand trap, right? So these are really good here, of course. Now, again, uh, shout out to my friend Chair. Chair is one of those guys that kind of invents decks like this one, where it's kind of like uh, Horus Stun and all these different variants. He actually plays Board Breakers. He's on like three Triple Tactics Talent, three Evenly Mash in the main deck, because going second, you know, this deck can struggle. At the end of the day, it's a Stun deck that wants to go first, but uh, I really like the hand traps. I think the hand traps make a lot of sense in this format, especially post Infinite Forbidden, which introduces stuff like the Fiendsmith. The Ubel deck is one of the best decks in the game. Snake Eyes is also really good, so that's why I'm like playing all the hand traps. But again, if you guys wanted to swap these for board breakers, you can do Droplet, TTT, and Evenly Match, right? That's just an option for you. You don't have to necessarily always go for OTK if you're going second, so the Evenly Match is really good, but just some options for you guys to play. So moving on to the extra deck over here, we are playing uh, just the standard rank 8 stuff that you guys are always going to see. So one Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, one whole Parbinger, one of the Dean Gearsu over here, one Draglubion, as well as number 100, just an OTK package for you. One Zeus. Zeus is really good, of course, when you're playing all of these Ixies monsters. Then, of course, we're playing some rank 7s as well, because we're playing the Shangri era. Shangri era you only ever make if you have Raid Soth on the board. There are times where you end on like Shangri plus Raid Soth plus uh, a Fenrir, let's just say, right? And that board is actually really strong because uh, once you Fenrir banish something, then you can Shangri era to lock a zone once you lock a zone the rate souls can activate the pop a card so shangri era is also one of those really really good cards where if you just open the kashira stuff this is a card that you really want to end on because it's going to provide some protection for you you'll live a turn with this and then uh, it's going to be able to disrupt your opponent a lot so one shangri era of course we're playing the one big eye big eye is really good of course with all the rank sevens that you can make with kashira one red eyes flare this is an optional card i'm playing this card just because it's really good into time and i never want to lose the time so that's why i like playing this one dark arm dark arm is really good as well just as a card to break your opponent's board if you're able to kind of clear their board and then even if they're playing on like one card and you get back into like a simplified game state that's where dark arm becomes really good because you just make this clear their entire board sometimes you can make zeus over this on top of this as well which is really nice uh but dark arm is really good in that sense and then of course we're playing some link monsters now the link monsters are going to make a lot more sense when you guys see the side deck so we're playing the one underworld goddess one axis code one unicorn one ip and one sp in the side deck you guys are going to see why we're playing these but i like playing the generic link monsters very very good underworld goddess also helps you just out a lot of cards that you can't otherwise out so i really like this card and uh yeah that's it for the extra deck 15 cards i think it's very very powerful moving on to the side deck the side deck is always going to be up to personal preference i say this in all my videos however this side deck is kind of built to be post uh, infinite forbidden and then uh just to beat a little bit of everything right so there are some times where if your locals is all combo players make sure to side for combo if it's all back row players make sure to side for back row this is just a little bit of everything so three lava golem lava golem i think is very important this could even be sphere mode if i'm being honest with you just in today's format how important it is because like the ubel decks end on like phantom of you bell plus the rank 10 negate plus soul of rage which is insane you know snake eye ends on 
really powerful boards as well so lava golem is just really good again going second you don't really care about your normal summon in this deck other than vanity fiend but you're probably going to be siding out vanity fiend going second anyways right so three lava golem very important one harpies and two lightning storm these are really good for back row matchups of course you got to be playing these and now this is why i'm playing so many link monsters i'm playing one change of heart and three mind control i know this is kind of something that people are not doing right now but i feel like these cards are so absolutely insane if you are going second and you're just able to take your opponent's monster and link it away like you're effectively clearing their board without causing any of their effects to trigger because a lot of cards will have effects where it's like if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard by card effect if it's destroyed if it's this if it's that if you're just linking it away a lot of time monsters won't have an effect afterwards right and uh, if your opponent puts up negates they're forced to negate these so it's like okay if i start my turn with like a mind control plus an imseti plus something else i don't want my imseti to get negated i don't want my uh effects to get negated i'm just gonna go mind control you have to now use your negate on this okay you negated it cool the rest of my combos go through so i personally really really like these and the reason i like them also is because they're searchable off of thrust and that's why we're playing the one thrust thrust is good going first and going second going first it's really good because you can search something like d barrier which we're playing one of and uh this is really good into some matchups so i like playing thrust into d barrier but going second thrust is really good into the back row matchups it's really good into the front row matchups right so that's why i like playing the thrust into these cards over here now this is kind of debatable i'm playing three solemn judgment i think solemn judgment is really important when you're forced to go first you do want to play out some cards to go first because of course you can see this whole side deck is for going second but uh solemn judgment is really good because if you're just able to end on vanity fiend solemn judgment you're pretty much winning the game because at that point if they have imperm if they have dark ruler if they have droplet it doesn't matter what they have you just solemn judgment to protect your vanity fiend and you're pretty much good to go now uh i will say though if you're not playing these you can definitely go to thrust and then uh the other two cards could be more thrust targets for going first whether it be the rumor cannon whether it be you know there's so many different options for you guys but i personally like solemn judgment i think solemn judgment just makes a lot of sense so i'm on three judgment but again this is just a skeleton and you guys can use it to kind of build your own side decks with whatever you're most comfortable with so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Horus Stun for the July 2024 format. We know there's not going to be a ban list until the end of August now because Konami has said that officially. So I feel like this build is very safe and very powerful going into the upcoming format. Of course, it is an anti-meta deck and it is built to be a lot of the meta decks in today's format. And I think the card choices in here make a lot of sense and actually help you do that. You can be very competitive with this deck. So with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you guys all for watching. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We're uploading shorts pretty much every single day. You guys get videos like this one. You guys get combo videos, product openings, all that good stuff right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned in for more. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, thank you signing out. Peace.